Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to the Ask Sue Show. Sue is from Shropshire in the UK and lives with her four children. She is known for her two sides of every story show and her quote sitting on the garden fence. As Sue come out for England, never mind America, gives a voice to the voiceless, gives spiritual guidance and unites advocates from all over the world for all causes. So with no further ado, we welcome the one, the only, As Sue. Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Ask Sue Show with a, a, a bit of a different one tonight for the uh, Psychic Night, um, because obviously we usually have some little do readings and all sorts, but I, you know the Ask Sue likes to go. We, we like to do the other side of the garden fence, as they say. And obviously we've interviewed the lovely Derek Cora not that long ago when it was the year of me doing the show uh, on, on my anniversary. And what a pleasure it was, too. The two hours just flew by. And I am almost certain that tonight is going to be exactly the same. And tonight, we are going to have the other side. We are going to be having the lovely Gwen Acora. Hi, Gwen. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. Have you had a nice day today? I have, yes. Yes. Everything has been very busy. Excellent, excellent. I'm really looking forward to tonight because um, it's quite funny because I've had a few messages and, and people said, oh, no, uh, what are you going to ask her and everything? I went, I, I don't know. We'll just go with the flow. <laughs> I <laughs> said, think I'm sure we'll end up having a good old British chin wag. <laughs> 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 so, so first of all, how are you and Derek? And, and tell us what's going on around you at the moment um, as far as obviously you must be busy busy with the events going on of course with Derek oh yes yes we're we're always busy Derek's um doing his uh eternal spirits tour around the country at the moment um he's also had a couple of television shows that he's he's been on uh just recently he was filming yesterday excuse our clock um, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> uh, he, he was filming yesterday for a rather interesting program, the details of which I can't give you at the moment, um, okay. but it'll be on Channel 4 very soon. Um, and he has done a, a, a Halloween special for Keith Lemon with uh, Celebrity Juice, so uh, he'll be making a brief appearance on that too. Oh, excellent, excellent. So I, I need to go back now in time a little bit, and obviously we're not going to say anything about ages because I'm feeling uh, quite <laughs> old at the moment, saying that I'm going to be 40 next year, and I keep saying <laughs> the kids are putting that four and the O together at the same time. But, you know, have you always been interested in the, in the psychic world, Gwen? How, how is this for you? You know, where did it all start for you? Um, is it something you're well, already interested in? I was... Uh... Not so much interested in, interested in the psychic world because I didn't really give it an awful lot of thought. I've always had my own feelings about the afterlife and I've always believed that we do go on from here. And I've, I've also always believed that we do have a blueprint uh, for our lives and it's up to us actually whether we follow the pathway or... Um, whether we don't, but ultimately, uh, I, I believe that the, the, we reach the end by whichever route. But as far as um, the psychic world and ghost hunting and, and uh, all this sort of thing, no, I didn't really give it an awful lot of thought. And until I met Derek, I, didn't e I hadn't even heard of what a, a medium. I didn't know what a medium was. It was uh, totally... A, uh, a whole new world to me. Um, yeah. I, I'd heard of fortune tellers and tarot card readers, and I, 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 on an occasion, I'd actually been with people from the office in which I worked for uh, a tarot reading to uh, a, a, a guy called Mr. Flynn, who was famous in Liverpool. I mean, this was way before I met Derek. 
And yeah. um, I was so surprised by the stuff that he he came out with and told me about myself, but he was very dour. He, oh, he was frightening. He really was. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, he was very accurate, um, uh, as it turns out, because the things that he told me all those years ago, um, they, they, all, they all came to be. And although... Still, I didn't recognise him as being a medium. It was only when I met Derek that the penny dropped. And um, although saying that, Derek was very circumspect about telling me what he did, because yeah. at the time when I met him, um, he wasn't a full-time medium. Um, he had a day job, uh, and that was in um, sport where he used to. Uh, go to sports centres and, and tutor children in football and different different sporting as, aspects of sporting life. Um, yeah. And yeah. He, he did sort of broach the subject to me, yeah. you, you know, sort of how did I feel about this. And, of course, I, I, I told him exactly what I've just told you now yeah. and that was when he sort of said well <laughs> <laughs> and, and did he give you did he you. give you a but reading I, of the time, there was no he... way there was no way i was going to tell my mum and dad at that point in time <laughs> <guess not>. the <laughs> new boyfriend's a clairvoyant hey what do you think of that one you know <laughs> did at that time did did he literally pick up anything off you did he say something that Obviously, blew you away with his love and charm. Obviously, in the end, but you know, did, was there something that he said to you? Did he give you something as far as a reading, or did he pick up on somebody close to you at that time? Um, n no, n not not. To, um, I mean, we this 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 subject took three or four months to come up. It didn't happen right. straight away. <laughs> he kept <laughs> things very close to his chest, um, but. Um, no, so initially, no, no, it was it was more an, an interest in what he was doing, and then of course, the ultimate thing was, well, you know, what what do you what can can you can you see anything with me? And I can remember sitting. He had in in those days, he used to use tarot cards and crystal balls because what I people couldn't accept the fact that he was sitting opposite him, uh, that they were sitting opposite him, uh, having a reading of him, but he, the information was not coming from anywhere. They uh, always yep. used to prefer yep. the fact that he used either tarot cards or a crystal ball or whatever, yep. because they thought the information was coming from that yes. aspect. Um, and, and they still do that now. <laughs> <laughs> they do to a degree. I, th I, I think yeah. that, that nowadays people are more informed. I mean, I'm yeah. going back an awful lot of years, and yeah. people didn't didn't accept quite so easily the fact that somebody could sit off opposite them and 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 say, yeah. "Well, I've got your great aunt Fanny or whatever here," you know. Um, yeah. yeah. They didn't ac they didn't accept that. It was more. They they would accept more information coming from what they thought to be an inanimate object. It yeah. was totally different then for the yeah. uninformed. I mean, I'm not talking yeah. about people who were um, used to going to spiritualist churches and who 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 knew the system of things. I'm talking yeah. about people like me. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Just the um, best way to put it is just ordinary Joe public. <laughs> mm. The ones that just popped in. Um, because uh, when we go, when I've gone to fairs, you'll always see the ones that have got the tarot cards and, and the crystal balls, they, they're quite busy. And then the one that's just yeah. sitting there that hasn't got a lot around them could be the best, yeah. but people just see what they see. Oh, yes. They don't yes. look through that. Yes. Definitely. People think for some yeah. reason that they'll get more from somebody who's got a crystal ball or a set of tarot cards in front of them than they... Yeah would from a medium, whereas the, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's universal, but I'm saying that in an awful lot of cases, the opposite mm. is true, because yes. 
a tarot reader is a tarot reader who a reader who has psychic abilities and who may be very very good but they are not uh, on the same level in my opinion as yeah. somebody who who doesn't use that um, exactly yeah. tool. yeah so I've got to ask you this because when we're talking about reading have you had a lot of people um, you know like other psychics that have give you readings because it's like almost to uh, a bit of a challenge if you like I've had a lot of people wanting to give me readings but I won't receive a reading from anybody I don't want a really? reading I, I, I don't I don't require a reading um, I know that my mum and dad are, are in another realm and that they're in the spirit world I know that they love me I don't require confirmation of that this sounds very yeah. arrogant of me, but uh, I, I don't require yeah, it. I prefer to meet tomorrow, tomorrow, and I, I don't really want anybody to say or tell me that um, that you know, sort of the, to, to to project for me. I don't, I don't want that. That's just me, you know. Sort of, I don't, yeah. I don't require. I don't want it. Do you know what? I, I think that's lovely, and, and that's no dis disrespect to Derek, who's going to snatch the phone off you and say, you what? Well, <laughs> I think that's lovely, because let's face no, no, it, a lot of wives he go he... with their husband and will back up everything they say, but you're sort of saying, no, actually, I, I'm quite happy being in the, in the way that I am. Whatever's going to yeah. come to me will come to me. I don't need to be... Because I, I must admit, I was... And that sort of blow my little joke is going to have with you because it's like saying, well, what's the point of having a conversation with with him because he's going to tell you what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but you've already said, well, actually, I don't want to know. Whatever's going to happen no, is going to happen. No, well, but, well this, is, this is the way that I am and this is the way that I, I've always been. Well... Yeah. always been I was intrigued with what Derek did and and you know yeah. sort of I'd sit there with crystal ball in my hand saying to him what do you see um mm. but this was when we first met but and and this was when it was all new to me as well but over yeah. the years I I've I've I, that's the the way that I prefer things to be yeah I, I, I don't, I mean, it's the first time I properly spoke to you. I did speak to you, didn't I, very briefly before speaking to Derek last time. But I, I, I just, I, I love, and I've got to say to everybody, if you haven't friended Gwen yet, please go on Facebook. Uh, your statuses <laughs> crack me up some days. They just, they are just like me. I mean, I have to be a bit more careful what I say on the RC Radio Show. But if you want to know if it's black and white you're looking for and no grey, go to Gwen's page. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I love it. I mean, to be fair, you, there's, you don't know, need to know what's going on tomorrow because you're just sorting out today. <laughs> I just love it, you know what I mean? But the thing is... You're your own person, and I love that. I mean, I, I can see by your posts that you do every day that you're a very proud wife for your husband and, you know, and, and the things that you do. But, you oh, know, absolutely. I, I also love the fact that you're your own person too. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that would follow their husband and they say, oh, yeah, I'm very much into it, and, I, yes, I know exactly what's coming up, and he, he's so good, he tells me this, and that. but you're not. You're saying, hold on, no, I actually don't want to know that. And that's, that takes a lot of... Um, you know, you're, you're very much your own person, and that's nice. Do you know what I mean? But well, do you see that... Mm, sorry. Yeah. Do you see that a bit difficult? Do people not see you like that sometimes? Is it hard just being Gwen and and not always being Derek's wife? Um, I do tend to um, be viewed as an extension of uh, Derek Akora. I think yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. A, a lot of people expect me to to um, just be well another version of Derek, but I'm sorry, I'm yeah. not. Uh, I suppose yeah. it's got a lot to do with the fact that when we met, we were both in our middle thirties. I mean, you, you know, so maybe things had been different if I'd have been, or we had been a lot younger. I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. we were both fully formed, fully rounded human beings before we met. So yeah, we are independent people. Yeah. Um, Derek yeah. has his views on things. I have my views on things. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that everything that Derek says, I'll say, oh yes. 
that's got to be so because I'm as questioning as the next person and and, and yes yeah. I, I will I will um call into question sometimes. You know, <laughs> I'd love to be aspects. a fly in the wall when that starts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a lot of vigorous? I mean, (laughs) (laughs) do do you have a lot of things like that? Are you a couple that will question each other's um, thoughts? Um, Yes, yes, I I I would say that yes. I don't mean that that you have a row every night. I don't mean it like that. No, 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 no. It's 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 not a a row sort of situation, but there are certain yeah. things that um, I would say, well, actually, you know, sort of I don't agree with that, and, and Derek would say exactly the same to me, you know, sort of, well, I think you're wrong yeah. because I, I, this is my view, you know, so it's, it's but it's not a row situation, it's yeah. more a discussion. Yeah, yeah um, but you know what it's like. If if I don't put that right, everybody would say, see, they do have rows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you can imagine do. it already, can't you? <laughs> With you, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I just, I, it's quite funny. There's so many jokes I could be saying here. I've just got this vision of you saying something to him about, no, I don't want to go, I want to go there next week. And he'd say, no, it's not going to be good. I know it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do, do you... Do you actually have rows like that? Seriously, no. rows. I mean, disagreements and in things that... Has it ever come to it that he's actually said to you, no, we, we can't do this because it's not going to be... I feel that this isn't the right decision. Or has he guided you in a way without even... Maybe not even discussing it to a point, but just saying, look, it's not the right time right now? If If Derek said to me, I don't feel that it's good and... Um, I I felt that he was really, really um, not adamant, but really convinced. I would go along with what he was he he would say, and there've been occasions when he's said to me, if I'm driving out alone, he'd say, "Do me a favour, don't go this way, go that way." I'd actually yeah. go the way that he'd suggested, yeah. because yeah. I do respect, I, I do respect yeah. his um, his yeah. his feelings and his mediumship. Uh, I've, yeah. I've I've seen so much over the years that uh, I'd be yeah. foolish not to take heed. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, yeah. I'm talking about, you know, so when we disagree, it's a, it's a situation where some of his theories I question. Yeah. Some of them I'm perfectly accepting of. Yes, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Absolutely. I just, um, sorry for that little disruption. My one daughter's diving out the door. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it's quite, I mean, you know, loads, obviously there's loads of different people that have got different, uh, how can I put it? different ways of life you know like the husband will do one job and one will do the other but Mm. you you are together most of the time aren't you with obviously the events and everything and obviously you've been a great support with him and everything does it get a bit hard sometimes because you're so much in the limelight and together a lot of the time does that put pressures on it as well um not really i mean we're so we're so used to being together i mean we're together 24 7 um, yeah, I, I think we're both used to one another, and uh, yeah, we don't have a particular problem with that. Um, yeah, Derek has his interests, you know, so if he has his football and his chickens and this sort of thing, and yeah, I am usually working <laughs> while he's <laughs> carrying yeah. out his pastimes, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're sort of not actually physically in each other's company 24-7, but, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, generally we're, we're together all the time, and it, it doesn't it doesn't create a, a problem, yeah. really, no? 
it's lovely. I, I love, I like to say, I've got to say, I know every time we see the posts, it's lovely that, you know, you, you do so much together and, and your posts are always together. It's lovely. It's, it's just nice <laughs> to see. So, so what is, what does Gwen like doing on her spare time? And I've just got to say, before we put a thing, I've got Shelley Preston in the chat room saying a big hello to Gwen from the fan club. Hello, <laughs> Shelley. And thank you for all the work you do with the fan club. It's yeah, uh, fantastic, it's it really is. We're, Derek and I are, are both eternally grateful to, to both Shelley and Faith for all the work that they do with, with the fan club. Um, yeah. You yeah. Know, but uh, as, as far as my, my pastimes are concerned, um, I'm trying to research my family tree, and I'm addicted right. to it at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, every spare I, moment that I have, I'm beavering away with find my past and uh, yeah. ancestry and things like that, sort of trying to find out what the, fa the, the family Billings and Fozard were doing all those years ago. So yeah. uh, that's, that's my all-consuming pastime at the moment. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm mm. always fascinated by family trees and all of that. Mm. It, it, it amazes me. I, I just love it. I got back to, I think, the 1700s on my mum's side. Mm. But, but all I've got to say to people is, my little bit of guidance talk for tonight is, if, if you've got your grandma still here and she's telling you stories and you think, oh, not write it again, down. <laughs> write it down or tape it. Do yeah. not leave it until after they've gone and think, I wish I'd have took notes like I well, did. Well, you, you, you see, this is the mistake that I made because years and years and years ago, I said to my dad, um, I'm thinking of looking at the, you know, sort of doing the family tree. And I'm so sorry that I didn't sort of ask more questions and, um, you, you know, sort of take notes because... A lot of things are hazy memories to me yeah. now because it's 21 years since I lost my dad. Um, yeah. And, and so I'm so sorry that I didn't take notes then because it's only a couple of years ago that I really actually uh, got my act together and said, right, I'm going to do it now. And there are so many things I can think of that uh, that, that I would have loved to, uh, to have asked him because it would have answered so many questions and saved me an awful lot of searching through records and this sort of thing, you know. But thank yeah. God for the internet. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can yeah. say. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was on that um, Jeans Reunited and stuff, and it was like you just think you've got onto this little trail and all of a sudden, no. It's mm. not that one. <laughs> oh, there's sorry. nothing worse. Sorry, it's sort of, no, it's you, the you're really one. on sorry. a roll, and then you just you, you discover that you've been following the wrong family. Yeah, <laughs> been down that route. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you have to suddenly get the steel chainsaw and saw that branch off and restart again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh, I've been there, done that, and, and up till silly o'clock in the morning doing it as well. And it's oh my gosh! But it's fascinating. So, how far have you gone back in your family tree, then, Gwen? Um, on my my father's side, I've gone back to this late 1700s. On my mother's side, I've I, I've been more fortunate. I've got uh, I've got way back to sort of the 1500s on that side. But basically, because the the names are more unusual, right. and that makes that makes an awful yep. lot of difference. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's not so good for me because mine's Davis. I mean, it's not the easy. <laughs> <laughs> Rather a lot about. It's like the Johnsons. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then my nan was a Williams. I mean, that's as as common as it comes. <laughs> no, no disrespect, gone. Um, but you know what I mean. And it's but it's. Just fascinating. I love things. I'm not into so much my history, but I do. I'm fascinated by, you know, what family were like. And I, I do, I'll tell you a little story. I can remember my granddad. He, I said, "Have you got any pictures of your mum, granddad?" And he mm. went, um, "Yeah, I have somewhere." Anyway, I went the next day. He said, "Oh, I've got that picture you asked for." And mm. I said, "Love you. Can I have a look?" Anyway, he showed me this picture, and I went, um, "Was that your granddad?" And he went, "No, that's my mum." <laughs> She looked no. just like an old man. She looked like a man. And it was like, oh, and, and she was a, a, 
but it's like a, a um, you know, a big lady, but she was stuck in, but you know, and, and I was like, yeah. oh my goodness, do you know what I mean? And uh, it was so funny, but we, uh, but I, I just regret the fact that I didn't ask enough questions, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and like you say, it's just fine in the work. So my top tip of the day, everybody, go and speak to your grand and granddads as soon as you can, and get as much information as you can, and learn from mine and Gwen's mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I can only second that. <laughs> yeah. So let's just go back. How did um, you and Derek actually meet then? Um, we we had friends in common, um, and we we sort of were actually friends before we started going out together. Oh, for six months or more, really. Um, and sort of we'd have a coffee of whoever we ever met up and, and this sort of thing. And then one day he asked me, he asked me whether I'd like to go for a meal and, and, um, we did and it sort of went from there. Um, yeah. in our youth, of course, we were both going out to the, the clubs in Liverpool and he swears that he remembers me, but I don't remember him. Um, yeah. I used to work in a in in a club in in Liverpool, um, and he he says he remembers me working there. I I don't know whether he does or he doesn't because Derek's memory isn't sort of most wonderful tool in his box. <laughs> <laughs> um, he doesn't need to remember; he gets told. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, so th so that's how we met, and that's how we started going out together. Um, it just sort of went from there. We used to talk for oh hours and hours. I mean, if anybody anybody out there knows Derek, sort of, he'll they'll know how good he is at talking. And I'm not talking about on on stage, but uh, yes, he's a good <laughs> talker. I can remember yeah. sometimes he'd be sitting there, and I'd be thinking, oh my. God, I've got to be up in the morning. This was four o'clock in the morning, and I'd have to be up about seven, you know. Sort of like, oh, please shut up and go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but I, I must admit, like, when he came onto the show, it, it, he was as nice and pleasant to talk to you as you are, and it was so easy to have a uh, in the interview because, you know, it's just... And just like you, just so... And then just like I said to everybody on the statuses, you are just so open about things and, and, and everything. And it's just lovely. I love, and I've got to say, that little chick. Oh, if anybody, gorgeous, hasn't, if anybody it? hasn't seen this little chick, it's hilarious. <laughs> Gwen just said to everybody, we've got to find a name for it. Yes, well, Can Friday's the cut-off point, so all the chick names. Oh, my goodness. I, I was amazed. I looked, and I, I, the last time I looked, it was literally 300 and some odd comments. Oh, well, there's 400 thinking, today. Yes, I thought there would be, actually. I haven't looked at the actual thing, but I look, remember last time I looked, it was like over 300. And I was like, how is he supposed to pick a chick name out of that? Oh, he will do. <laughs> he, he, he will. Um, he'll be going, <laughs> he'll be going through, the, to, through them late tomorrow, and um, uh, yeah. he'll, he'll, choose, he'll choose the name that appeals for him, and it will be... Um, yeah. It'll it'll be named, and the uh, the person who comes up first with the the name uh, will get tickets to one of Derek's shows whenever they're he's around in their area. So, yeah, excellent. So, and that was on your on your personal wall, wasn't it? Uh, no, was it on, no. It's this is a competition the club, on the the uh, Facebook fan club page, Derek Akora Official Fan Club. On, on Facebook, right. so the uh, any entries have to go there. It's no That's use right. putting so it I on my it. my page. It's no use putting it on Derek's. It's got to be on the official fan club page. Yeah, um, and I have put the link into the chat room as well, everybody. So please go and have a look. Click on that if you haven't already joined. So Shelley right. will be pleased. Now we're adding some more to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, uh, it's. It's, it's not been easy, let's just say. You, you've um, stood by Derek a lot of the times, and, of course, everybody's going to say to me, well, are you going to ask about the fact... You know, Derek's had to go through a lot of trouble, especially, I mean, they're not, you're not always as, not, as lucky to find media as nice as myself, so it's so polite and thing, but 
there's always going to be those that want to, when you get so far in life, that want to knock you down. Oh, and, you know, I, I, think, I, I think that, that as far as the British newspapers are concerned, not so much yeah. the radios, uh, radio stations, but the uh, British newspapers, they're looking for a story, and they're looking for a story yeah. that sells newspapers. And unfortunately, in this country, a good, a good story is bad news for somebody. They're not yeah. interested in hearing about good, good stuff. That, that doesn't sell newspapers. Horror stories no. and nastiness and yes. uh, bile sells newspapers, yes. unfortunately. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the thing is, though, Gwen, I mean, everybody always says, oh, how's Derek? And, and, I've got, and I'm going to ask you, how did you deal with that, Gwen? Because let's face it, we've, we've Which always... Which particular occasion are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but you know what I mean? How do you... It must be so hard, because let's face it, we protect our loved ones and our partners and our parents or whoever they may be, we protect them. And it must have been hell for you sitting there, seeing well, this It's, it's and very difficult, stuff. and it's, it's very difficult to see lies written about somebody that you care for. Yeah. It's very difficult indeed. And you do find that you feel that you want to stand up and, and, and shout and say, hang on a minute, this isn't true. But unfortunately, it's counterproductive in that if I did that, it would yes. just be more, uh, uh, fan the, fu the, the flames. Um, yeah. So yeah. I find that the best thing to do is say nothing. And the best yeah. thing to, for, for Derek to do is say nothing because... Um, the negativity grows if you feed it. Yes, yeah. I, I just, I, I've just seen some of the things. I mean, but the thing is, let's face it, it's not just been Derek. It's been all of the mediums at some point have had their fair share. Oh, I yes, mean, they I have, mean, but I think Derek's had more. Yes. I really yes. do, because but, um, I, I, I think his personality has somehow, well, not somehow or another, you, you know, he, he, he has been more exposed to the public eye um, than any of the other mediums. Um, he's been on so many different television programs uh, that other mediums haven't been on. Um, and so he's been a bigger target you know, yeah, uh, and people have been out to get him in the press. Yeah, um, and things have been twisted so much. You, you know, so there's very, very, very little truth in yeah. the stuff that uh, has been in print. I mean, for instance, I can remember being in Ireland with Derek and. Um, Derek's agent at the time phoned him up and said, there's some newspaper's been on the phone. They want to know. Uh, they want to, they, they, they want to know um, about uh, Derek being drunk on a plane coming home from Spain. Pardon? <laughs> Derek wasn't drunk <laughs> on a plane. You know, it's a little, I mean, where has this story come from? Do you have anything to say to the son? Well, no, because it's totally untrue. And yeah. um, the next day we were we were horrified to see a, a newspaper article in the Sun saying that oh, Derek had been doing this on the plane and Derek had been doing that on the plane and he was rolling drunk all over the place and it was totally, totally abs. Oh, we we had had an argument on the plane. No, we hadn't. It was so far from the truth. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, so it was absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It, it was... You, um, did, you do wonder just if they just instance. pick... Sorry, you do wonder if they just pick the story out of a hat and say, that'll do for today. <laughs> um, well, yes, they do. Unfortunately, in, in some situations, there are some people who... They uh, sit in near you or whatever, and maybe 
I don't know, maybe they don't agree with what Derek does, or I don't know. I don't know what the motives behind it are. And they think yeah. it would be a good idea to sell some sort of story to the newspaper that hasn't got a, a, an ounce of truth to it. Exactly. At all. You know. Yeah. It's, Obviously, it's, it's ridiculous. But, of course, it looks good. It looks good yeah. in the press. And it sells newspapers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, nobody would buy a newspaper where Derek, where you, you know, somebody phoned up and said, "Oh, Derek Acora is a really lovely person, and he helped this lady across the uh, this old lady across the road." They'd say, yeah, "Yeah, okay, fine, go away." But yeah. you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, but that's about everything, and they'd never put the good news out. It's, it's always about the bad. Every single time. It, I mean, it, it changes subject totally. We do animal advocates work on the show. And do you know what? The only sort of dog that ever gets in the paper, usually, we get the odd mm-hmm. percent of nice, but very rare, a pit bull's just bitten a kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know what I mean? And so many times. And you just think, you know, we, we've got some beautiful pictures of pit bulls and stories, and one's just won a massive yeah. award in America. 2013 mm. award for you know, for being with kids at school and the kids sit there and read a story to a pit bull and everything. And, yeah. oh, no, th- that won't get all over the papers, but one ripping the child's face off, it'll be straight on. But, uh, okay. I, I mean, this is, uh, uh, as you say, it's, it's sort of off, off subject, but um, in my experience, I, uh, I've always had German shepherds and they've always been the most beautiful, friendly Lovely, lovely dogs that you could ever wish yeah. to meet, um, and yet they did go through through a stage of having an equally bad reputation. But yeah. um, it's 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 because they're big they're big dogs, and if one does unfortunately for whatever reason bite somebody, they yeah. can cause one bite can cause a lot of damage. I find that little dogs are far more liable to be snappy and bitey, but they yep. don't do as much damage because, of course, they're smaller. But I do agree that, you, you know, sort of, uh, dogs should be kept completely under control and be totally, totally trained and yep. be kept on the lead at, at, at all times when in public places. I wouldn't yep. take our two dogs anywhere and, and just let them roam free because I think yep. it's intimidating for people and... Um, who knows? Who knows? They're animals. They're yeah. not human beings. Yeah. And, and let's and, and let's we'll come back to the dogs in a moment because I want to ask you about obviously there was a lot of um, talk around the most haunted um, mm. and and I I used to love watching that show. I absolutely loved it. And Derek was always very good with it, and I loved it. Mm. Was the friendships on there as good as it looked from from what I was watching on the TV? No. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> right. Not. I've got to uh, say. Initially, 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 yes. Initially, yes. Later, no. Yeah. Right. And but where where on earth did it go wrong? Because it, I mean, I'm not being funny. Derek was always. I was watched. I loved it. It, it was. It was so spot on with things. They were, you know, stuff was coming up on the screen, and it was saying that it was spot on, you know, and it was showing. And obviously, mm. we've, I've interviewed Richard Felix the other day, and he was, you know, saying about Derek, and he's still working with Derek and everything. Mm, obviously, yes. it, you know, and, and I, I love Richard Felix. I think he's beautiful. Hi, Richard. Hope he's you're okay. Fantastic. <laughs> he really amazing. is. He's absolutely fantastic. fantastic. Lovely, lovely I have guy. Said to, I have said to him that I'm going to meet up with Derek and I'm going to get um, Richard and I, I've got a little event in my back of my mind ready to set up and I've had a word of Richard and he said, oh yes, we'll all be up for that. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm sure. If Richard's involved, yeah. Derek will, Der- Derek will yeah, be happy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, um, but, you know, and it was always, there was always things come up on screen and it was saying the dates and everything and Derek, we've got it, and, and to be fair, it was either spot on or it was very close to it. But, well, obviously, I, I mean, it's, it's quite funny. I've just had an inbox of somebody saying, ask about your vet fielding. Mm. Was there as much as what it was saying in the papers? Was it really as bad as what it was saying in the papers? Or, again, was that a lie? Um, in what respect? They were Obviously, they were saying that your vet fielding was saying this, that, and the other, that there was a war between them and everything. Was it actually a war between them? 
was it just a, a confrontation or, or what was it? Was no, it there was never a confrontation. Uh, it was always it, it was always um, a, a mystery to both Derek and I why um, suddenly the atmosphere grew colder, should I say? <laughs> And yeah. then the the penny dropped, and it, it's my opinion that uh, Derek's popularity became too much because yes. um, claims have been made that uh, Most Haunted made Derek a Cora. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. <coughs> Derek was um, on television way before Most Haunted came along. He, he'd been on television for four years before most haunted was aired he had a fan yeah. base that was global um and uh so he wasn't unknown he was not unknown before before yeah. most haunted i'm not saying that most most haunted didn't escalate to this popularity because yes it did because yeah. most haunted the program became so popular and it was an iconic program um yeah. And Derek being part of it, obviously, he, he he became even more known than he was. But it certainly yeah. didn't make Derek Akora, and it certainly didn't put Derek Akora in the public eye. Um, oh. And what, what? I would say, in my opinion, that the, the, the cooling of relationships was purely down to the basis that Derek appealed to the to the public for whatever reason, whether the people believed in what he did or whether they didn't believe in, they still found him entertaining. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, and it's quite funny, um, <laughs> Max in the chat room, hi Max, he said it, Derek made most haunted. And, and that's right. You I've heard mean, an awful lot of people say that. Um, yeah. Most, without he most, was remembered haunted, by most haunted, there wouldn't have been the platform to Derek, for Derek to do what he... He he did, but he certainly he certainly added something to most haunted that nobody, again in my opinion, has since. Uh, he, I, I I think he was a hard act to follow. Um, yeah. But as I say, that's my opinion, and I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the thing is, I mean, it's like people have messaged me in the chat room and, and they're saying, you know, yeah, he, he, number one in medium, he's touring and everything. It's not mm. like his world fell apart when he left there. It. It's still continuing oh, no, to grow. No, 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 I mean, no, it, not he's at all. actually I mean, made... The, the I, I, I can haunted. remember the very last time that Derek appeared on Most Haunted. It was... Um, do you know, I can't even remember the name of the location. But we had been waiting for uh, a phone call. We were at a hotel in Derby somewhere. And we were waiting for a phone call for, um, for, for to let us know that the person from production would be coming along to show us where the loco location was. Because it's true, Derek was never, ever, ever told where he'd be working on that particular night. And all the yeah. stories that have gone all around about living television, giving him information, and all this sort of thing, all these stories, is a load of tosh. Yeah. Um, we were waiting, and we get a phone call saying, oh, you know, so we'll be there in half an hour. And anybody who is a medium knows that a medium has to open up before they work. And yeah. Derek had gone through the process, and of course, he was... He was draining and draining because he was told, oh, you know, we'll be along in half an hour. Oh, it will be another half hour. And then another half hour. And it was yeah. more or less all around 8 o'clock in the evening. It was in the summer. It was certainly still light. Yeah. Um, before the person from pr production turned up and uh, I and Ray Rodaway, who was driving for Derek at the time, we followed the production vehicle to the location, and I can't remember the name of the location. Um, and Derek went in to have makeup done, and I was in I was in the room standing with him, and he sort of got up out of the chair, and he was absolutely drenched in sweat, and he'd gone pale and whatever. 
And he went out. He went out into the garden area. And Claire Hollywood from Living Television was at the location at the time. And she followed him out, and I followed them out. And he said to me, I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. I'm finished. I'm done. And uh, Carl and Yvette were called out. They were told that uh, Derek no longer wanted to continue with the programme. And uh, that was it. We went home. And that was the end of Derek working on Most Haunted. So all the stories about him being sacked and finished and this and that and the other, total and utter lies. Really? Yes. So everybody, you heard it first on the Asu show. What exactly happened? Because I know it's so hard. Because and this goes for a lot of different stories. Again, Gwen, you know, we we do read the papers, we do mm. watch the TV, and and sometimes we don't always see the truth. Do no, we? no, so, because uh, the truth the truth manipulated, or the truth yes. is um, well, it's certainly not the truth. I've heard lots of stories that. Uh, have gone around um, about, oh, Derek was sacked. No, he wasn't. Derek walked away because Derek wanted to walk away. The previous October, he'd given his notice in to say that he would work for one more... Well, he wanted to leave in the October um, because he he felt that he'd, he'd done enough with Most Haunted and, and he wanted to to move away from it. Yeah. Um, Living Television had said to him, or said to him at that meeting, um, do one more series and give us the opportunity to develop a program for you. In your, you know, sort of a program for you. And yeah. so he agreed. So he filmed series six, or he filmed almost all of series six. Uh, Meanwhile, Living Television were developing the program which ultimately became Derek Okora's Ghost Towns. And he also agreed to do two, maybe three more Most Haunted Lives. The last one to be at Halloween, 31st of October, I think it was 2005. Um, he'd walked away from the actual filming of the program in the summer of, I think it was 2000, 2005, and he did the actual last live Halloween 2005. And that was when it was publicly announced that he was leaving. But he'd actually right. already left. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, going back to it, you know, we never hear the old thing. All I want to say to everybody, if you hear anything about Derek on the grapevine, I know if you message Gwen, she would just tell you the truth. Well, yes, so we'll if, if you hear something... Just have a look at her profile, because trust me, she will have had her opinion already on that status. <laughs> <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> but, uh, In a nice way. No, no. It, it, it's uh, an, awful lot of, an awful lot of lies, rumour yeah. has gone around. Um, Derek, unfortunately, has been tied very much by a confidentiality uh, clause in his contract with Antics Productions, and it was Antics Productions who employed Derek, not Living Television. Um, yeah. And uh, of, of course, he's had to adhere to the confidentiality clause. Um, it is with our lawyers at the moment who are looking over it um, because. Confidentiality works in two different directions, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. You know, you either all keep yep. them or you all tell your own side of the story. One side of the story has been told, but the other one hasn't yet. But Derek is writing his autobiography. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, it'll be a good read. <laughs> it's almost when's finished, gonna, actually. When's that going to be out? Do we know? We hope. We hoped that it would be out this year, but it'll be the beginning of next year now. Excellent. I can hear the fan club already cheering about that. <laughs> 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 oh, and this is the thing. It, I think there'll be a lot of people wondering. Because, a lot of you people know, do. Yes. It's like they'll be wondering, how, 
<coughs> excuse me, how he's going to approach it and how far he's going to release. Can you say he's how far he's going to approach release? it? Honestly. Has he literally said, you know, has he actually put it all as it is, or is he held back on some? Um, I would say that it would be more or less all as it is. Yeah. All the all the, all the areas that have been covered by others, um, he has a right to reply to that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely so. And and has he, has he done an autobiography before? Right. No, no. Um, he he's written a number of books before um, that have been part of part, partially autobiographical. Um, but only really touched on his 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 private life. But this this will be less of his spiritual life. Uh, obviously, there will yeah. be elements of it, but um, more of yeah. the uh, the the Derek Johnson, should I say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm getting um, some points put in. Faith has just posted. Ghost towns was fantastic. Mm. Derek enjoyed making that enormously. It really, really was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook, is he ever going to finish it? <laughs> finish what? Not not when he's naming chickens. <laughs> <laughs> is he ever going to finish what? Uh, I think she's meaning the book. I think there may be oh, a couple book. of seconds behind, you see, so I think she's catching up. Sorry. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, yes, well, it's almost finished now. It's a, it's a strange thing when you start writing writing a, 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 a book. You don't realise the enormous quantity of material that's involved. I mean, yes. when he's written books before, it, he's been um, commissioned to to write a particular book on a particular subject and um, a, a particular amount of words. But uh, an autobiography is um, more than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be, I can honestly say I'd be terrible at writing a book because I think to myself, I'd start on one finish, one topic, and if they said to me one topic, forget it, because I'd just go lead to about another four different ones. <laughs> <laughs> When do, when do we get the uh, Gwenacora's side of life? Is anybody interested in that? <laughs> well, we've got quite a few people in the chat now. That's Facebook funny. Page. <laughs> That's really funny because Faith has just posted in the chat room, I think Gwen should write one. <laughs> See, Faith, we were thinking of right then. <laughs> <laughs> the chat room is going to light up in a minute. I know it's going <laughs> to. Um, but, but what part... What parts do you remember? What things that you know? Let's let's look at some good things. You know, it's good to have positives. But you know, what what things do you remember that you have good thoughts? And what places have you been? And you know, what what good memories have you had? I mean, I know there'll be loads. Is there some that stick out more than more? Oh well, uh, as you say, there are there are, there are, there are so many. But I felt totally privileged going to Egypt with Derek. That was absolutely amazing because we got to see stuff that mm, you, you just wouldn't see normally yeah. um, on, on the tourist trail. Um, and some of the some of the houses, some of the the places that are, I've I've been with Derek in, in both ghost towns and most haunted. Um, they they've been absolutely fantastic, you know, just sort of seeing behind the scenes and and uh, learning more about the 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 locations than than you would normally learn about. Uh, it's it's been totally totally privileged um, in in being allowed all these things, and hopefully in um, the spring of next year. Derek will be going on a trip to the sacred places in India. Um, right. And that, although India's not somewhere that I'm looking forward to, to, to going because I, I'm not a great lover of Indian curry, <laughs> <laughs> as far as the culture's concerned, I, I'm, 
I look forward to doing that. Yes, yeah. So, what is there anything that Gwen would like to do? Because obviously, let, let's face it, you, you're obviously with Derek all the time. Is there mm. times when you would just like to take time out, Gwen, and just go and do what you know, go and have a week away from, for yourself? And, and where would you want to go, and what would you like to do? Have you got I, mean, I, I, and, I don't. Um, I don't think I'd like to go a week uh, for a week away. I mean, you know, sort of when I go away, I do like to be with Derek, and I'm. <laughs> I hope he yeah. feels I, the same. He's no, that, not showing any signs of feeling any differently. I didn't mean that but. exactly, or it sounded, to be honest. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Just when it's like your time, when you were, if there was somewhere you would really like to go that you've not been, that's got. I would love to go to Alaska. I'd love right. to go to Alaska, and I would love to go and whale watch. I would oh, love yes. to do that, and I've been trying to persuade Derek to do that for quite some time now. And I think I'm right. getting there. That's one thing I'd like to do. I tell you what, I'll have to have a word with the people that do the, um, uh, you know, we watch the whales of the preserving them and various things on the show as far as advocacy and everything. Now, I may have mm. to have a word with a few of them maybe for you. Oh, yes, please do. It may, maybe you can make a bit of promotion out of it so we can be helping them at the same time. Because obviously with the whales and dolphins and everything, they're, they're obviously, you know, all struggling in one way or another. Oh, yeah. All, all animals, actually. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, I might, well, I'll have to have a word. We'll have a word about that, Gwen. Maybe we'll talk some <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'll now, wait, I wait in eager, eager anticipation. <laughs> yes, we'll wait for that one. Um, but I can remember Derek saying when he came onto the show also about he was want wasn't he what he wanted to do um, a parachute jump or something. Um, well, he did have the opportunity once upon a time. Yeah, he did. He did have the opportunity, and um, at the last minute he 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 bottled out and uh, he got Ray to do it for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's always talking uh, about getting a microlight uh, yeah. because he'd love to to have a microlight. Now, that's all very well, but um, when Derek was taking his pilot's license, I went up on his first lesson with him. This is many years yeah. ago. Yeah. And I wasn't particularly instilled with confidence when he had his headset on back to front. And I was in a, ti a tiny, tiny four-seater four plane, which is like a, a, you know, the little mini cars, the old mini cars? Yes, yes. It's like that with wings. And I was sort of scrunched into the back seat, and the instructor was in the front seat with Derek next to him. And there's Derek sitting with the, the microphone bit on the back of his head, basically. <laughs> I thought, oh my God! <laughs> and we were on the ground at this point. But uh, and another thing, right I way. wouldn't have gone up if I didn't if, if I didn't thought for a moment that Derek was going to land the plane. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't realise they did that on first lessons. I thought it'd be this chap just taking us around and taking off and flying around yeah. and coming back and landing. But no, we got up there, and Derek was doing all this stuff, and he had to land the damn thing. Like, oh, God. <laughs> and what was that like, Gwen? Did he actually do a good job of it? Well, he got us down. <laughs> I'm still here to tell the tale. <laughs> It's not something I repeated, believe you me. No, I didn't go up on another one. <laughs> Oh, dear, Gwen. I can just imagine you sitting up there going, I'm sure he's got that the wrong way round. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was one of those situations where it was you waiting for the instructor to say, unfortunately, he did. Um, you've got your headset on the wrong way round. <laughs> you know, <sort> of <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I wouldn't have been able to hold it in. I'd have already been laughing so loud they wouldn't be able to stop. <laughs> I was too frightened to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Not when he's going to be flying in a moment, no. <laughs> so did he actually get his license for that then? Yes, he did, yes. 
yes, and uh, he did it in far fewer lessons than they thought he would, because he was in his early 40s at the time, and they said, oh, yes, he did very well, actually. But ever since yeah. then, he's, he's said, you know, if you wanted to get this micro light and announced to me that I'll get a two-seater so you can come up with me, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> get a single-seater. Because I ain't going nowhere with you, chum. <laughs> no, we'll, I tell you what, I'll come along. We'll get the flask out, look, and we'll sit in the car. <laughs> I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I, what are you like with heights, Gwen? I don't mind heights. I don't. As long as it's the top of a ladder or somewhere safe, but not up in a plane with Derek. And certainly yeah. not in a microlight. No. I can remember when I was in New Zealand for a year, and we had this great suggestion of a um, being stunned in there, and they said, oh, come on, let's go and do a bungee jump. Oh, a bungee jump <laughs> off, off the, um, the, oh, God, what tower is that in Auckland? Oh, yes. Um, um, the Sky Tower, is it? It's something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Because we had one. It was like one of the largest in New Zealand, and it was on a on this um, big long bridge. And yeah. I can remember looking, and do you know what saved me from doing it? It actually turned around and said, "If you've got a problem with your back or anything, please do not do it." And I actually had had twinges for like the four days before. I still believe they did that to me purposely, so I didn't have to do it. I'm not oh, right. I only walked. Where I would have invented twinges. <laughs> I, I couldn't. There's no way. I, I just looked at that bungee, and they're, they're doing the, like, the calculations, your weight times by, length of mm. rope times by. But, whoa, excuse me? I, I'm going on your calculations whether or not I'm going to hit the floor <laughs> or not. Whoa, no way. It's far too dangerous. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever do anything like that for charity? You know, no. like bungee jump or something? No. <laughs> no, not. I wouldn't either. No, I, I'm not not a chance. I, I, I'd be far too frightened. So, what what is the that you'd like to do that's sort of out of the norm, Gwen? Is there anything else? Obviously, you said about the dolphins, but is there anything that you'd like to sort of make them? Um, do you mean something different? Um, no, I can't think of anything. I, I really, really cannot think of anything that I'm certainly way past the stage of wanting to be a daredevil. Um, <laughs> I really can't think of anything that I would like to do that would be hair-raising or risky in any way whatsoever. Um, yeah. I've come to recognise my own mortality. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying you're, you're over that time. I'm not being funny. I never had a time. I did, I've never <laughs> liked, really liked tights, and I never wanted to do a bungee jump or anything like that. <laughs> no, no, no. A bunge, bungee jumping and that sort of thing just does not appeal to me at all. Um, no. Anything where you are risking your life, no, I'll save it for other people and let them enjoy the thrill. I'll watch. <laughs> So, obviously, we've said about um, Derek flying and things. What about driving? Mm. Who, who may, do you drive? I do. A and who may and you drive? And I often drive? have a driving instructor in the passenger seat. Well, do you? Yes. <laughs> well, in the form of Derek. Me, like, <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> is, he, is he a Mrs. Bouquet? He most certainly is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. To the I point where it. I've often pulled up and said, no, you drive. <laughs> 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 Taking into consideration that I've been driving longer than Derek. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we do, we do have those situations. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's funny. Doesn't uh, everybody yeah, I've been, I've been... Sorry? Doesn't everybody? Yes, I, I've had the one where I got out and uh, slammed the door and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's funny. I, I love hearing all these different things when people have had, you know, and especially when you talk to somebody and it's the same and you think, good grief, I have done that myself, you know. <laughs> well, I think everybody does. I, I mean, yep. I think people have this perception that Derek and I live this, life where we're 
thinking about spiritual things all the time and musing over the meaning of life. But no, we're not. You know, so when, when Derek's not working, he's a normal man. And normal yeah. men tend to, tend to turn into driving instructors when they're in the passenger seat when the wife's driving the car. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Is it difficult when you go out, Gwen, and Derek's not working and you wanted to have a bit of time, how, how is it when you go out? I, obviously, Derek will have been noticed everywhere that he goes. Is mm. it hard sometimes? Um, no, people are very good. Generally, people are very are very good and 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 uh they they do respect uh people our privacy um you do get the occasional time where where somebody will sort of come up and plonk themselves down and want to have a reading, but that happens rarely yeah you yeah know, it's it's um i mean we we went to lunch when we were in Spain last time we went for lunch with uh, Colin Fry and Mikey and yeah. um it was it was lovely because people left them alone they didn't didn't intrude and and you know so it really was it really was nice um yeah yeah it it once you've finished your meal or whatever you're doing occasionally somebody will say I didn't like to intrude or I didn't like to interfere or whatever would you yeah. Uh, have a photograph and or an autograph or whatever you know. So then that, that's okay. That's that's perfectly yeah. acceptable. I don't I, I don't object to, to to that. Nor does Derek. Um, it, it's only very occasionally that people do do sort of you know yeah. take it a bit too far. We're yeah, we're very fortunate. Mm. Yeah. I mean. It, it, sorry. No, I, I I can remember years and years and years ago when when um, when when Derek was first starting out, you know, so and we used to say, I don't know, I don't understand how people can be so uh, rude to 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 people that are um, you know following them, giving them a living, yeah. whatever, however you'd care to describe it, but yeah. sometimes. Sometimes, on the very odd occasion, there can be a situation where you can sort of appreciate the fact that uh, others have got short-tempered. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I just, I, I, I just love it. I just like the idea. Uh, like when I spoke to Derek, he's so, it's a, just lovely to chat to, him. and I think everybody in the chat room will agree that both of you are. Like you said, just normal people, and that sounds a bit of a daft thing to say, but it's like your statuses, Derek's statuses and everything are, um, you know, talking about, the ch I love it when you talk about the chickens and the dogs and, and the pictures. I mean, that picture with Derek and that chick, it just absolutely, I loved it. Oh, it was just like so, so, so natural. But you know what I mean? baby. <laughs> yes. So how, so how, I've got to go to the animals, sorry, but uh, how many chicks have you got? Um, how many have we got? We've got uh, 13 chickens and Charlie the cockerel. And we've right. got seven ducks. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So have you just got one little baby chick, have you? And one little baby chick, yes. I, I just got a yes, vision we were going to say nine, and then I've got a vision we were going to have another picture of another name in. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Well, we haven't I had just... Charlie the cockerel for very long, um, right. and uh, it, he's he's certainly ruling the roost. Right. Um, <laughs> he keeps a very cl close eye on you when you go in the in the in in the run, you know, sort of, and you think, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to turn <laughs> me back on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and and who named Charlie? Oh, Derek. Oh, it yeah. did out then. Right. Yeah. It was. It yeah. wasn't another choice from the from the fan club. No, no, it wasn't. No, no. Naming naming the chick is a first. Oh really? Oh, excellent, mm. excellent. <laughs> I love it. 
Absolutely love it. Well, see, I mean, I've got the three dogs and I've got two chickens and we've got three rabbits and we've got the cats and it's just like a little menagerie, do you know what I mean? And I just yeah. love it. The idea of going home to the animals, I mean, mm. you, you must really miss them, you know, when you've been away for a few days and you come back oh, to the do. dogs. Oh, we do. We really miss Jack and Penny when we're away. Um, yeah. Because, well, they're part of your family. They're our children, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. And they're... Uh, they're both getting on a bit now. I mean, they're both 11. But, are uh, they? Oh, what, God, what breed are they? Uh, Jack's a standard poodle, and uh, Penny's a, a German shepherd. Um, I mean, Jack, I, he, he doesn't look any different now to when he was three, four, whatever. Uh, yeah. Penny's showing her age a little bit, but not much. She's, she's just gone a bit grey, really. But, uh, yeah. no, they're both, they're both doing well. We adore yeah. them. Absolutely adore oh. them. And, and did you have them some pups, or what's the score mm. with them? Oh no, no, no. We've had uh, we've we've had them both from uh, pups. Um, I think yeah. Penny was about oh, ten weeks old when we got her, and uh, Jack was a little bit uh, two or three weeks older. But uh, oh, no, we, really? we've had them both from pups. Yeah. Uh, I've just got to say to Max, who's a good friend of mine, he's in Belfast, um, Gwen, so you'll have to catch up with him. Also mm -hmm. a psychic and, and, and lovely, lovely energy, and he's going to go all bright red in the chat room now. Um, <laughs> but he's just said, Gwen, you'll have to call the next chicken Sue. Oh, he, thinks he's, he, he does think he's so funny, doesn't he? He thinks he's hilarious. <laughs> funny man. <laughs> <laughs> So, so when you go to Belfast, um, if you could just give Max a bit of a cut round the ear all when you're around there, that'd be great. Oh, I'll, <laughs> I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. Um, but it'll probably be next year. So uh, uh, because Derek's, although he's he's going to Ireland, he'll only be in Southern Ireland when he goes over in November. Right. So, but it'll be Belfast next year. Right. Yeah. He's in. He's in Belfast. Yes. So we'll have to arrange that clip round the uh, ear. That's uh, fine. You, you drop me a line and remind me. <laughs> I'll sort okay, that yep, out for you. Well, actually, I know. I'll get him over here just to visit, and we'll come up up to one of the one of the events. Okay. Right. We'll come and see you, so we can have an earlier clip round here. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse, eh, Max, to go and see them? <laughs> oh, actually, we'll come and see the chickens. Wait, wait, right, the chickens? Yes. Yeah. It's so funny. I've got to say that Sherry, who's in America, she's just said. Sue's chickens wander in the kitchen. And do you know what they do? I was on the phone talking to America the other day, to me in America, talking about the show and everything. And I went, oh, I am so sorry. And they said, what's that? They said, what's that noise in the background? I went, it's a chicken. And I went, <laughs> where are you? And I went, I'm actually in my living room, but it's coming into the kitchen. <laughs> just laughing the rest But they of do. I was, I was brought up on a farm, and the chickens used to just wander around and whatever and you do you often often wanted some come toddling yeah. in to the to the to the house the, the, the most <laughs> the most funniest thing Gwen was when you put a chicken in your nan's bed when you were a kid <laughs> Oh. Chicken, this chicken just stayed under the cover. <laughs> I said to my nan, "I put you a spare suite under the pillow." So she went to have a look, and there was a chicken in her bed. <laughs> I've never put a chicken in the bed. I did. I did put a tortoise in my brother's bed once, but um... <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't think he ever but... recovered from the shock. <laughs> You don't have to be to be British. You don't have to be crazy, but it's only else. <laughs> <laughs> he was only about six or seven at the time, and sort of he went to bed and put his, sort of his, his his feet into the bed and came across this foot. <laughs> <laughs> I was a wicked oh, old sister. Oh, the things I used to do to my nan—it was hilarious. <laughs> my nan used to always have a breakfast table. You know, the older people used to always set their breakfast table up, didn't they, as they called it, the night mm. before. And my nan had a little yeah. plate ready, and she used to always have a cup upside down with a teaspoon right by there and everything. And she used to get up about 10 o'clock. Well, us kids would be up, you know, 8 o'clock. So we used to go we used to go wandering about the, the farm and round the fields and everything. And we... <laughs> 
Oh, if I find this frog and I'd come up with this great suggestion. You can imagine it, can't you? If Nan sits down, no. gets a little sketching, she lifts up this cup, and I tell you what, literally, spot on timing of this frog, jumps just as oh, she lifted no. this cup up. She screamed the place down. Well, I, I don't know, I didn't wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that is so awful. <laughs> it was so I funny. Oh, I'll I tell you. I cannot abide frogs. <laughs> oh, really? What, what oh, about no. spiders? Spiders are okay. There's one sitting next to me at the moment. Don't mind spiders at all, but frogs? Oh, no. Uh, now, what, what is it? Is it like newts and frogs and toads mm. and everything, or is it just specifically frogs? Frogs, newts, toads, anything like that. Oh, no. I just can't deal with them. Awful. Slugs. Ah. Anything slimy. Really? Oh, no, oh, no. no. But um, insects don't bother me. Yeah. It's quite funny, because if I'd got Cathy in the chat room, if I'd have said the word spider, she'd have jumped about six <laughs> feet in the air. She, Oh, my goodness, she hates them. One day we were talking on the phone, and she's literally screaming. And I'm like, whoa, what's the matter? And she went, oh, there's a spider. I went, it's a spider. <laughs> Crazy. But no. So what? What? Any, is there anything else that frightens you? Is there anything, like we said, that you're okay with heights? A lot of people are... Frightens the old types and you're okay. Is there anything else that frightens you? Um, no, I can't think of anything really. Uh, no, 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 not in the normal day to day events. No, I don't think so. Um, no. pretty, pretty okay about things. Yeah, but see, I just love the fact that wherever, wherever but I saw Derek with one of the chickens once before, and said, I think it was when you'd bought the three of them, didn't you? Didn't you buy mm. three or four? And I saw the the um, picture of that. And I just thought, that's just so lovely. The idea that you come home and you've got all the animals, because I know what I'm like with mine. And it, you can't, there's nothing that can beat it than the dogs greeting you at the door and ha so happy to see you and everything. And, mm. and it's just lovely. So, yeah, we'll definitely be coming for a photo with the chucks and you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, well, we're chickens certainly do bring a garden alive. I've got to say that, you know, sort of, um, whereas you look out in uh, out of the window into a blank expanse of grass or flower yeah. beds or whatever, there's always something going on if there are chickens or ducks around, you know, sort of, I mean, ducks are absolutely hilarious, they really are. They're funny, absolutely they funny. I, I had some once before, actually, and I used to love it. They would know as soon as that hose pipe. I used to try and sneak out and put the hose pipe on for fresh water for them, and they knew. Yeah. It didn't matter where they were in that garden. They knew what I was doing. I, I, I'd try and sneak and all sorts, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and every time they just knew. <laughs> they that was hilarious. Characters. Absolutely hilarious. And so, um, so what, what else do you like doing at home then, Gwen? Obviously... We've got the animals. What, what else do you like doing at home? Um, well, I'm not at home very much, really, uh, because I, I, I spend to, tend to spend the majority of my time travelling around with, uh, with, with, with Derek. Um, yeah. Uh, so when we are at home, it's catching up on the things that need doing, uh, usually paperwork with me and housework, which I don't like, but have to do, yeah. obviously. Um, so, yeah, my, my really, uh, sort of only, only treat to myself is, is doing this family tree thing, which tends to be all consuming once I get started, you know, sort of it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's difficult to break away from it, but, exactly. uh, yeah, I, I like reading, I, I read a lot, um, and that's it really. Yeah. Oh, and what books do you like reading? Is there any topic? Oh, anything. anything in particular? Uh, I like historical novels. I like, right. uh, I like, I like historical novels. Um, uh, and I like reading actual sort of factual history stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, excellent. See, the thing with me is I don't seem to get time to sit and read. Do you know what I mean? Are you one that can get into a book and you, re you continue reading, or are you one of them that stops and starts? Oh no! Um, I, I, if I if I start reading, I can 
just forget time. I won't hear people. I, I really get absorbed into in, into what I'm reading. Um, Derek can have a long conversation with me, and I won't have heard a word because you know. So I'm busy concentrating on what I'm reading. But uh, I, yeah. I like to read in bed as well. It's, yeah. it's part of my going to bed routine. I've got to have yeah. a read before the uh, the light goes out. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, is it that you get back home really late on a lot of occasions, though, Gwen, due to the fact of what with Derek and everything? Well, yes, yes. If we're if we're coming home, I mean, if we're on a run of four or five shows, they tend to be in an area of the country where it's it's not practical to come home, so we'll stay yeah. in hotels. But um, if it's somewhere that's uh, the Midlands or whatever, we'll 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 come home. But it does tend to get to sort of two o'clock in the morning, maybe sometimes three, before we yeah. we arrive back home. And then, of course, it's very difficult to to get to sleep because you're still well, you're still seeing the lines in the motorway. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's almost like an adrenaline rush, isn't it? You yeah, feel like that's just right. From the event and. You're talking yeah. about what's happened and, mm. and everything to go with it. Oh well, D- Derek couldn't go to 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 bed. He couldn't go back to a, a hotel room or come home and just go straight to bed because he's still he's still through, as you say, on a, a, an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Um, but then he will become very tired very quickly once that, you know, so if you'll reach a point and then it's woof, and he really does yeah. need to, because he expends an enormous amount of energy when he's uh, he, he's doing a show. Um, yeah. I think people maybe think it's a, an ego thing or a gimmick that he changes his suit halfway through the show. It's not. It's because he's absolutely... He's expended so much energy. He sweats so much that his suit is really wet. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it, it's it's a difficult it's a difficult job that he does. It, it is. Yeah. It's a, a difficult job. Yeah. I couldn't do it. No. Do you do you worry him about about him, Gwen? You know when you've been, I mean I've seen it a couple of times. When we've seen him, on, I'm, I'm like, sorry, but I'm going to go back to most haunted. But when mm. there's times that we've been, uh, we, we the visit, you know, just the viewers have been sitting there worried, sick, thinking, is he going to be okay? What's it been like for you sitting on the background there, like dying to go to him, but can't obviously mm. because the, the cameras are rolling. Um, there have been times of, uh, when I've been c- concerned, definitely, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, I have total and utter faith in the fact that Derek is very, very experienced when he's he's, um, channeling and he knows exactly what he's doing. But there have been times where I've thought, oh, you know, this is going a little bit too far. Um, Yeah. And I have sort of been very, very tempted to sort of say, stop, you know, stop the cameras, stop the cameras. Um, Yeah. But uh, you, you know, so ultimately, uh, he's he's been okay. But uh, yes, there have been times when I've been concerned for him. Yeah. But as I say, he's very very experienced, and he does know exactly what he's he's doing. Um, it's not something that people can go into lightly and do at the drop of a hat takes an awful lot of um, preparation and practice. And Derek sat in um, rescue circles and uh, this sort of thing in spiritual churches for years before he ever went out in investigation. So he has had an enormous amount of training um, by people who are experienced in the field. You know, so he didn't just decide one day, oh, I'm going to channel a spirit. Uh, it wasn't that way at all. Um, as I say, he he spent many years in 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 rescue circles with uh, spiritualist churches and working with mediums who were rescue mediums, and so yeah. he he knows the sub, his subject inside out. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you as squirmish as uh, sorry to say the name, but Yvette Fielding? 
are you the sort that some you'll hear a noise behind you and you'll jump six foot, or are you quite quite like it's okay, it's just a noise? Uh, I'm no, I'm not squeamish at all, and neither is that field. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I do tend to be, uh, I, I do tend to look at things logically, yes. Um, if, if there's a creak or a groan or, a, um, you, you know, sort of a noise, you do try to, to explore all logical explanations first. And yeah. um, then, if there are no logical explanations, you start looking for a paranormal explanation. Um there have been lots of occasions where, you know, there's been a chandelier swinging or something, and it's been a case of, ah, oh, yes, well, the windows aren't very well sealed, you know, so there, there is a bit of a draft coming through, so, you know, so that's, yes. uh, that's why the chandelier is swinging. But there have been yes. occasions where I've been in um, places and I thought, ooh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not the sort of place to want to be on my own. Athelhampton Hall was one of them. I can remember yeah. walking up the stairs there, and you have to remember that um, when filming's going on, and especially in confined spaces, uh, there's no room for me hanging around behind the car the the, ca the camera. So I tended to be on my own in, in possibly another part of the house or on a stairwell or something like that uh, yeah. in the dark. Um, and yes, you do sometimes get a feeling that you're not actually alone. Um, yeah. Let Castle was another place uh, that I was in the Great Hall on my own. And the only illumination was um, the pad light from the camera coming down the spiral staircase and that was another time when I thought oh yeah you know sort of maybe I'll just go up those stairs and sort of join the people <laughs> <Wait a minute>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm being asked by Max he said can I ask Gwen about the night in Pendle Hill mm. live did she worry about Derek that night um well yes Yes, I, I, I do. Uh, when when he when anything is is happening that uh, it did to the degree to the degree it did in in Pendle Hill, um, it, it's a very strange place, and everybody seemed to be affected by it. Um, but the worst. Place, I think was uh, Brannigan's nightclub. I think that is the worst, the worst place, and where I've been most concerned about Derek's welfare, because he just lost the use of his legs completely, and that continued on for about half an hour after after filming, and and I was concerned then, um, for the whole of the time that we were in the uh, in the nightclub, um, it was. Um, it had a feeling about it, and Derek had gone with Carl Beatty, uh, just walking around, having a look at things, and they'd gone up behind the, there's an enormous great organ, you know the organ pipes? Yeah. That uh, these huge organs have. And yeah. um, they, they'd gone up behind there, and... As I say, this this was before filming, before anything was happening, and Carl said that he'd been pushed. However, it happened. Derek managed to grab him. It would have been he would have been, if not killed, he 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 would have been badly injured had he fallen because it was it was a long way to fall. Derek managed yeah. to grab him, um, and that was really the start of it. Uh, you know, it, it just things gathered momentum from there. But I do remember being in this small room, and Derek was channeling this whoever it was. I can't remember. And he, it was totally dark. You've got to remember, it was totally dark. You yeah. couldn't see a thing. And 
Derek was sort of walking around at speed, you know, sort of, I mean, he, it was as though he could see he was, he was obviously the, the person that he was channeling was, was, um, in a different realm where he could see everything. And I, I, I was thinking, oh my God, you know, sort of, I mean, this is, it, it is so strong a spirit. It's, he's, yeah. he's going to fall. He's going to, you, you know, sort of really hurt himself. Um, but he didn't. Uh, you know, so that that, that I, I think Brannigan's was the, the worst place, although Pendle was quite bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the funniest one I thought was, um, gosh, where was it? It was um, the Witchfinder General. Um, gosh, I can't remember the name of the place. It was down Essex Way. Right. And uh, when they got stuck in the quicksand. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing paranormal about it, but it was, it was hilarious. Very hilarious, although very, very dangerous. <laughs> when, when has been the, what's been the best, you know, when you have a, you know, people say to you about, oh, the reading's absolutely brilliant. Is there any time that, Derek's absolutely blown you away with something. It's, you know, where's the one place that it was like there was no doubt in your mind? Oh, there have been a lot of those. Yeah. I mean, uh, with private readings, obviously, I'm not there. Yeah. Um, so I can only see the playback that uh, comes via the Internet where people are thanking him and, and, and saying, you know, sort of uh, how utterly amazed they were at the reading that they'd had um but on on stage i think i think the one that touched me most was uh at the, uh, the time when derek told a young lady in the audience that she was going to have a baby and this was she'd been trying for so long her and her husband they 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 hadn't been su successful at all and he said not only are you going to have one child you're going to have twins one of them is going to be very special. And right. um, the following, it wasn't the following year, it was the year following that. So two years down the line, um, he got a letter from this young lady saying that, that she would like to meet him at the theatre and introduce him to her twins. And it was the young oh. lady that, you know, Sir Jerry had said she was going to have twins, blah de blah and she said, and one of them did turn out to be very special. She had, um, she she was disabled in a way, but she was such a sweet soul, such a lovely, lovely, lovely child. Um, and that was that was one of the ones that touched me most. Yeah, yeah. Confirmation on a whole new level. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Just amazing. I, I just, I love. I mean. I, 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 we do the shows, you know, we've done psychic shows, I've done events and everything, mm. and it is just amazing. I mean, Derek's gift is a, 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 has blown, I'm sure, plenty of people away with the things that he said and how he's brought it through. But I think as much as anything else, it's his personality, is fun with it. It's not that every time he's given a reading, it's something of a negative or somebody's died or whatever. Oh, no, no, no. He's brought no. that fun with it as well. Yeah. Um, Derek doesn't deal in negativity, and as as far as he he's concerned, he will, if, if there is anything uh, of sensitivity to pass over that maybe isn't such good news, he tends to couch it in words that... Um, would only make it apparent what he was saying when the event actually happened. He's yep. not out to frighten anybody. He's not not out, not out to spread doom and gloom. He is. He thinks that it's um, the responsibility of a, a medium not to frighten people and not to just sort of give out bad news. Um, if, if there is bad news, it should be given in such a way that uh, um, it, it's... Because people dwell on, on things. I mean, if I was told something, 
I'm sure that from time to time I'd think, ooh, you know, I've been told this yeah. or I've been told that or whatever. And he said that's not what medium mediumship's all about. Mediumship exactly. is is proving life goes on. Yeah. Um, and and giving people uh, hope for not hope, but a belief that that there will there there is something more. Yeah. Yeah. What what is it that um, you know? Obviously, he's done. Most Haunted, you're saying that he's just doing other, obviously doing more TV programs and anything. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that Derek's got that he would like to do come the future? You know, you know, what, where do you see both of you in, say, 10 years' time or whenever? You know, have, have you got things that you have want to even better what Derek's doing already? Um, Derek adores his work. He does. Yeah. I can't... I can't see Derek ever, ever retiring or ever wanting to do anything more than, than what he is doing. He yep. absolutely loves his work um, and he, he, he loves the joy that he can bring to people when he, he gives messages to them. Um, I mean, yes, there are there are things away from work that he he he'd like to do. I mean, he'd like to see a little bit more of the world than we already have seen, but uh, not from a, a spiritual point of view, just from an interest point of view. Um, yeah. But I, he, even if he cut down on his stage appearances, I would say that he would possibly write more. Um, and share his uh, what he receives in written form rather than from um, a, a stage or a platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just got to say, we've got um, Profundity is in the chat room tonight, and he's but geez, I was just informed that we're having chicken for supper. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it won't be one of ours, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And Sherry's just put, I like to think the chicken I get at the store is not the same as the chickens that wander in Sue's house. <laughs> 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 they come in and eat the the chicken, the cat food and everything. Do oh, oh, they? Yeah. That's cannibalism. Oh, <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> no, do you know what? When I was interviewing um, Derek, I brought up on the subject of, obviously, the world that we're living in at the moment, and obviously yeah. how Great Britain is, or not so Great Britain is at the moment. What's your mm. thoughts on how the world is at the moment, Gwen? And, you know, and obviously spiritualism is coming more and more into people's lives, and, it's, and, and it, I, I don't class it as a religion for me. Mm. I class it as a way of life. Well, I think do you spiritualism may be coming more are... into people's yeah. lives, but spirituality isn't. Uh, and that's sad. I don't think that, yeah. uh, that, that people care quite so much about others, uh, not as much as they, they used to. Um, there's, there's so much going on in the world today that I, I, feel, I feel quite, quite sorry for, for, for younger people because... The life that I led as a, a, a young person and, and people before me, it, it, they, the people, the young people now will never, ever, ever have that quality of life. No, you're absolutely because, right. Um, and it, it's not, it, I mean, it's more materialistic now. I mean, children today have far more than, say, I did, or people like me did, um, yep. from a material point of view. But uh, yep. they 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 miss out so much because of um, well, everything. So it's all technology these days, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I I can remember talking to somebody on, not so long ago because of I do crossword puzzles and and this sort of thing to pass away the time. And yeah. I said, oh, you know, can anybody think of a word for so-and-so? And, -so? and, and it's, 
Oh well, I'll uh, I, I I don't do crossword puzzles, but I'll Google it for you. You know, so I thought, oh God, you know, it's just what is the point? What is the point? Yep. What is the point? Yep. You know, so if you just never challenge challenged in in any way, you know, so because everything's all there, Google. Yep. You know. Yep. And I, I, I think that um, life has become more difficult. Yeah. I, I just feel that, I mean, I, we've got, uh, even on Facebook, we've got a page called Hey Mr. Government Globally, and that's showing all the different things that, you know, is going on in the background sort of thing. And it's like, I keep saying to everybody, nobody connects anymore. No, they don't. No. And, and I, I was walking down the street, and, and I must admit, I've always got my mobile on me, you know, because obviously we're doing the show, the people that need to get in touch with me because of doing the shows, and Sue, I can't do it, or, you know, we, we need to do something else to go with it, or whatever, so I've always got the phone. But I'm watching, and people are walking down the street, and, and, and you know, and you can talk to people, and they're saying, oh, we're just going to put this on Facebook. And I'm thinking, mm. hey, hold other minute, uh, we're just talking, mm. you know, and, and people just seem to be so rude. You know, well, I mean, you're going they to a they're, more so, they're more self-absorbed than, than they 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 ever were. And yeah. as far as mobile phones are concerned, uh, oh my God! You know, sort of, if you if you stand as Derek and I do, sort of hovering around stage doors and in doorways, having a cigarette before he goes on stage, yeah. and you're you're watching people sort of walking backwards and forwards. So many people are walking along and they are on the phone speaking or texting or doing whatever and it it, it just seems to have taken over people's lives, you know, so I think it's absolutely yep. ridiculous. Yeah, but people don't connect. I mean, I'm not being funny, but I'm not going to say that word again. I'm 39, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking to myself, even, you know, when I was younger, we used to do things, we'd go fishing and... You know, and we'd go for long mm. walks and we'd be able to go off down the field and not come back till we're hungry. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then we didn't have a search party out after half an hour because we disappeared. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, and I think it's so changed that much that even my children, I don't let them go too far because you don't know who's about. Well, and exactly. then I, I just think that the government isn't protecting us enough against us. Well, I don't, I don't... I mean, what... what can the the government do what what can the government do to 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 make a difference to society you know so what is it what is it within people that has suddenly turned um what used to be a caring society into um you know a society that you have to be careful of i i know um, what you mean you know what, I'll, I'll tell you something, I'll, and I'll send you an event link after we've done the show. I mm. started an event because five miles up the road, there was a gentleman that I have found out is a paedophile. Mm. He has abused children, he went to prison for that, he came out from that, and he has now done stuff, I won't go too much to detail, but mm. to horses and to um, two dogs oh my God. as well. And do you know what, Gwen? I am horrified to tell you that this guy has been let out. My that God. That is what I'm talking about. The government is not protecting us. Yeah. Why yeah. is that sort of person allowed to go back out on the streets? And plus, why aren't they having a term in prison that is accountable to, for what they have done? There is well, no unfortunately, the, the, the prisons are overcrowded. And unfortunately, but because people do. If there isn't, uh, uh, sorry, I don't believe there's a preventative to stop them going into prison. It is there even isn't. if they get to go to prison. It, what? So they get six weeks in jail for doing something. I mean, for instance, a guy buried two puppies that were literally a few weeks old alive, and he got six weeks in prison. Well, if, as if, far if, as if we animal, gave them a, animal cruelty is concerned, it's it's something that I. I cannot abide. I, I cannot abide. And exactly. um, uh, as far as sort of harm to children and older people are concerned, I don't think that people should see the light of day ever when yeah. they've committed crimes of, of, uh, of, of this nature. But um, 
the sad fact is that the prisons these days are so overcrowded that they can't accommodate um, the 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 magnitude of, of, of people that, um, that that commit these sort of crimes. Um, and it, these sort of people, the, the, the numbers are growing. And yes. it's a sad statement uh, on society. But I still don't see what, yes, the government can punish or the legal system can punish. But um, what creates the problem what causes the problem because i don't remember there were occasions where somebody would get murdered there were odd occasions where you'd see um you know sort of harm done to an animal or a child or, or but not to the magnitude that happens today and yes. that is a society thing and yes. I, I just don't know what the answers are. I really do yep. not know what is it, it that creates this monster yeah. in society it, today. Yeah, it frightens me because, I, I mean, I speak to the, the children when they come home and they'll say that, you know, a child's for a teacher or they, they were doing something to be horrible to a, a person or whatever. Not my kids, I can tell you, because they would be in serious trouble. But... Um, uh, but you know, and I, and I just think there's no respect. I mean, no. The police I, I, I think that's us. what it is. There is no yeah. respect. There's no no respect for human life. There's no respect for animal life. There's no respect. No. That is something that's that's gone out of the window. I mean, when I was at school, we would have been trounced if we'd have spoken to a teacher in any way than yeah. utterly respectful. Um, not only would we be in, tr in trouble with school, but, but we'd have been in trouble at home as well. You know, but well, a th authority these days is held for nothing because exactly. authority is is is, is handcuffed. Yes. You know, so the people aren't allowed to smack a child, or um, you know, sort of an, it's an old old saying, but bear the rod and spoil the child and I'm not advocating beating children or uh, in Absolutely. any way whatsoever but I do believe that people need discipline growing up because if they don't have discipline growing up they won't be a disciplined human being as an adult exactly do you know what I mean I've, I've, I've quite happily and and I am quite easy in saying that if my children go beyond a boundary that I would smack their bottom. And that's not flash mm. their bottom. That is mm. smack their bottom. And the reason mm. is this. I am 39. I have never touched drugs. I've never been in touch with, in trouble with the police. I've never come home to, for trouble for my mum and dad and everything else. And, and here I am doing a show. So those smacked, smacks that I got off my dad, who I thought at the time was a horrible person, was mm. actually making me respect my parents, my grandparents, mm. and the world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, if I, 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 I trouble, agree with you. I would have been too frightened to go home. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yes, yes. That's the way that it used to be, but not anymore. Not no. anymore, because there are there are no there are no penalties to pay. No. You, you really know, so people people don't have to be answerable to what they do. I mean, these these. Um, Internet, social networking, children, uh, ask, is it, is it Ask FM or something like that? that I, do you know, I've heard about that, actually. Um, where, that, yes. where, where children have committed suicide or youngsters have yes. committed suicide because of bullying. A, why are the parents allowing them to, to be on the, these um, networking sites? Because where a networking site is... is uh, attracting an audience you won't get the people closing it down because there's too much money involved because they're getting yes. a great big fat sum of money for advertising on those sites yes. so the answer has got to come from um, at, at home unfortunately um, yep. parents have to take responsibility and actually see what their children are taking part in and putting a stop to it if, if yep. they um, uh, uh, joining any any of these these awful awful things.
places where people are allowed to abuse people and say nasty things yep. to them and, and prey on, on people that are, don't have self-confidence. Yeah. Uh, I just... What what do you think, Gwen, is going to be a factor that could change the world then? Because, you know, like you said, you know, it's about respect and it's about, mm -hmm. you know, there isn't the... Pun we can't... We're not allowed to sort out our kids. We're not allowed to gain the respect because the government took off that respect because they said we couldn't smack our kids to a degree. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, now, I know, obviously, there is people that push them limits to the total... way past boundaries, and I understand that. Mm. But we've got to get a respect for each other and a respect for Absolutely. our elders and yeah. uh, the uniform and everything. How do we gain all that back? Ooh, that's a question for the universe, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I just thought you'd... Well, I, 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 think just, that, like, I think that children right. should be brought up to respect others, principally by the parents, because that's where, you know, the, the Jesuits give me a child till he's seven and I'll give you the man. Um, yep. Uh, so principally at home, that's where it has to start because uh, children go off to school and if they're not taught to by the parents to respect the teachers, how are the teachers going to have any control o over them? Um, I don't think that, that parents should offload responsibility for the child's behaviour onto the school and say, oh, well, the school didn't do this, the school didn't do that. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I think parents have to take responsibility for their, for their children and their behaviour. Um, I think that, um, not sentencing, but the punishment system should be a little bit more stringent, where people do have to be responsible for their actions and words. Uh, and yeah. I think that uh, social networking sites should be policed far more stringently than they are. Yes, definitely so, definitely so. Do you know what, it's like, I, I, my children are on Facebook, and the people mm. that know my kids, um, it's quite funny, I've got Sherry and Max and everybody, and they keep an eye on my kids' pages as well, and, and they mm. notified me if anything else ever thing, but touch wood, we've been okay. But, mm. you know, they are advocates for the animals, they share pictures of... Mm. Well, that's what that social everything. networking is all, all about. Exactly. That's what, it, you know, sort of, I can see room for it in our society where it's an extension uh, uh, of going out and meeting your friends and <laughs> keeping scrapbooks and this sort of thing and joining yep. the guides or the cl cubs or whatever. It's an extension yep. of that. But, um, exactly. It's got completely out of hand, and unfortunately, it's controlled by people that really, really shouldn't be in that position. Exactly. Do you know what, Gwen? I've got I've some. Let's let's end coming up to the end of the show. I want to tell you about something I thought was beautiful, and you'll go with this, and I'll share you the video after the show. And, mm. and I don't know if anybody else has seen it, but there's a video going around. and there's two guys, and they say about you know there's all these trends that's on Facebook. And it's all being passed around, all these stupid dances and all sorts. Mm. And they said, but we want to share with you a new trend. And it's called, go to, uh, what is it? Go to a homeless person and make them smile. Mm. And all these young people are going to um, homeless people and giving them fruit and T-shirts and, you know, and, and a jacket and all this thing. And do you know what? I was looking and there's over a million shares on one video. Well, that's heartening to, to hear. It really is. You know what? I, I was sat there close to tears, and I was mm. thinking, why aren't we sharing things like that? And then mm. I looked at things, and I was thinking, oh, my goodness, they, it is. They are sharing it. But yeah. we need, And do you know what? I've got to say, Judge Gwen, I am going to do that. I am going to take my kids, and I'm going to go to homeless people, and I'm going to video my kids giving that, and I'm going to say I'm with that trend. Because yeah. what a beautiful trend to have. That's exactly the sort of thing we need is where we're starting to give to those less fortunate than ourselves. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. there's just not enough of it about. Just not enough of it about at all. No, there you isn't. There, there and, isn't. But I, 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 do think, I, do, I do think that there are an awful lot of people out there doing an awful lot of good. Um, yes. It, it's, yes. And there are an awful lot of, uh, of kids out there that are, uh, are doing exactly that sort of thing. Um, yes. Unfortunately, 
it's the not so nice minority that uh, that hit the headlines all the time. Yeah, but generally. Like you said at the very beginning of the show, Gwen, isn't it? It's the bad that gets shared, the good mm. doesn't. Oh, it's true. It's true. Yes. You know I mean, it's far more well, titillating when... to hear something bad. Yes, exactly. Well, do you know what? I, I I don't know about everybody else in the chat room and everybody listening all over the world tonight, Gwen, but I have got nothing but good to say about you, and I will definitely be sharing tonight's show because it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Oh, and, that's very uh, kind of you. Thank you very I, much. I've got to say that you're both very lucky to have each other because Derek was an absolute gem to be on the show, and, and the same applies for you too. Just very down-to-earth people. It's, and I've got to say to everybody, as soon as I said to Gwen and as soon as I said to Derek about coming on the show, it was straight away, of course I will, that's fine, and we organised it. And uh, it, it's just been an absolute pleasure, Gwen, to speak to you and just lovely to talk to you about everything, <laughs> which well, I knew was we, exactly how we did it. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it, and I hope I haven't bored too many people. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. We've still got plenty of people in the chat room, you know. Uh, but listen, thank you so, so much for coming on the show tonight. And uh, I will share those links to you after the show as well. And, uh, if, and uh, of course, we'll get people to friend you on Facebook if they haven't already as well. Okay, fine. All well, right. Thanks ever so much, Gwen. Thank and, you. And uh, have a great rest of the week. And please send uh, our love to Derek as well. I will do. I will. Okay, I'll speak to okay. you soon. Thank you, Gwen. Bye. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye. And I would just like to say a big thank you to everybody tonight that um, has been listening in the chat room and uh, obviously has been listening also from Derek's fan club. Uh, I have shared the link into the chat room, so um, let's just see how we get on there. So I'll be going and have a look in the fan club in a minute and seeing how they got on. Uh, I want to say a big hello to Faith and also to Shelley uh, that I know are both out of the fan club. So welcome, um, Faith and Shelley. Hope you're okay. Um, and also, let me just have a quick shout uh, to so Max, uh, to Faith, to Margaret, to Profundity, to Sharon, to Shelley, and to Sherry. And a big hello, of course, to Derek as well. I know I'm sure we'll be listening. And a very big thank you to Gwen as well. Um, and I've, I've really, really enjoyed tonight's show. And maybe, just maybe, we could do a, fan, a Derek Acora fan club show where you could ring in and maybe um, say some messages or maybe you've met him and you could call in and tell us about that and what he gave you as a reader. Maybe that may, might be a time for another show. Also, please have a look at the new website. It's www.asksueradioshow.com and uh, go and have a look. We've got quite a few different things. We are advocates as well for many different things for the children, for psychics, for animals and all sorts, many different shows. And uh, if you'd like to come on the show, maybe you're a psychic and you'd like to come and do some readings with us, by all means, give us an email. It's asksueshow at gmail.com. That's ask. Sue show at gmail.com and we've got a group on Facebook Ask Sue Show go and have a join of there and uh, let us know what you thought anyway it's been a pleasure to speak to you and uh, to listen Let's start again. It's been a pleasure to have you all listening. Uh, please join us. Uh, we will be on another night. I'm not sure about tomorrow night, possibly on Friday. So please have a good rest of the week and I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Thank you very much and good night. Bye bye. But I'd been forgotten, I'd go. I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? But I'd been forgotten, I'd go. I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting I do. Get out of here, cutting I 
Nado.